into this uh, Thanksgiving service as we gather together in the name of our Lord. I will follow the order of service as you find it in your bulletin. Uh, we're going home school today, so we're just going to get the bulletin and the hymnals. So there'll be nothing on the screens uh, this evening. But we'll begin by singing our opening hymn. It's printed in your bulletin, God our Fathers. with praise, 
He gives us reasons to leap with gratitude and thanksgiving. Therefore, because of Jesus and by his word of command, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Read responsibly Psalm 100. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Silver and gold I do not have, but what I have I give you. 
In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. Taking him by the right hand, he helped him up, and instantly the man's feet and ankles became strong. He jumped to his feet and began to walk. Then he went with them into the temple courts, walking, jumping, and praising God. When all the people saw him walking and praising God, they recognized him as the same man who used to sit begging at the temple gate called Beautiful. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. This is the word of the Lord. Please rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. And the Gospel of this day comes to us from Luke chapter 17, beginning with verse 11. Now on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. As he was going into the village, ten men who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. When he saw them, he said, Go show yourselves to the priests. And they went and were cleansed. One of them, when he saw he was healed, came back praising God with a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. Jesus asked, Were not all ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? Was no one found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, Rise and go, your faith has made you well. Thus far, the Gospel of the Lord. Beloved in the Lord, how do you give thanks? For many it involves eating turkey, watching football, getting together with family, enjoying a day off. How do you give thanks? It is certainly good that we gather here this evening and thank the Lord God. After all, that is what this holiday is all about, giving thanks to the Lord. However, as you may have noticed, there's room to squeeze a couple more people in here tonight. <coughs> Not everyone always assigns this as their highest priority giving thanks to the Lord God. But you are here, and I thank God for that, and I rejoice in that. And so we look at our text today in Acts chapter 3, verses 1 through 10. First of all, here we encounter a crippled beggar who had many reasons to give thanks to God. Think about what it was like for him what must have he experienced? What was it like to be in his shoes? Oh, he really didn't need shoes. His ankles, his feet, his legs. He couldn't walk. <coughs> it had been this way his entire life, over 40 years. Everywhere he went throughout his life, just imagine that. He was always dependent upon the mercy of others. He was dependent on, upon others to get him from one place to another. What a burden that must have felt to him. And that's where our story begins. Peter and John were coming into the temple courts. It was about three in the afternoon, the time for the evening sacrifice and prayer. It would have been a busy time in the temple. It was that time of the day where oftentimes many beggars would come and they would gather at the various gates and be begging for charity and for help. Well, this man's family and friends brought this crippled beggar there by the gate, the beautiful gate, the gate thought to be adorned with silver and gold. And there he was, begging. Seeing Peter and John enter into the courts, he, he asked them for charity. He said, look at us. And the man looked, perhaps expecting a very generous donation. To which Peter replied, 
I have no silver and gold, but what I do have I give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand, raised him up, and immediately his feet and ankles were made strong. It really was an amazing miracle when you stop to think about it. There were no six months of extended therapy. What a miracle that was. He hadn't used his feet, his ankles, for over 40 years, his entire life. And now he had the strength to get up and walk and leap. What a miracle. Can you imagine what it felt like for this man? His lifelong handicap he'd been suddenly healed from. All the times he had observed others being able to walk and unable to do so himself, and now he could do so, just like that in a word spoken by Peter. Indeed, he was filled with thanksgiving. And notice how he responded. He got up and walked. And the first place he walked into was the temple. He walked into the temple courts to praise and thank the Lord. Not only did he walk, he ran, he leaped, he rejoiced. What a great thing it is. But sometimes we're not always filled with that kind of excitement and gratitude. We who have had our ability to use our arms and our legs throughout our life, who've been able to walk and run and leap, been able to drive in many places, sometimes have very little gratitude. The man's first steps took him into the temple of the Lord. This is how God designed our feet for, to walk in the path of righteousness and holiness. To enter into his courts with thanksgiving and praise. Yet so often our sinful nature will tempt us to walk away from the Lord, to walk into sin, to walk away from God and pour ingratitude. This man walked into the temple, and not only did he walk, he leaped. And not only did he walk, walk leaping and rejoicing, but he did so. Verbally, oh, he would have been noticed by others for sure. Couldn't miss it. And they recognized the man. This is the guy we used to see at the, at the gates begging. And now he, here he is walking and leaping. He'd been there for years. How can this be? Well, the man was giving thanks for sure. God had healed him, and it was by the name of Jesus, a point that Peter would soon make known to the crowd that would gather and marvel over this miracle. What a great thanksgiving it was for this man, this crippled beggar, walking, leaping, and praising God. That is how he gave thanks. What about you? How do you give thanks? Oh, we might be tempted to think that, well, my story is not as miraculous. You know, if my story were as miraculous as his, I'm sure I would be filled with that same kind of excitement and zeal of, of thanksgiving. We may be tempted to use the ordinary aspects of life as a way to forget about thanksgiving. We're good at asking. Sometimes, like the nine lepers, we forget. Oh, maybe not this night or this week, but throughout the year. We fail to give credit to God, to thank Him for His abundant blessings. And by our sinful nature, we may find ourselves walking away from the Lord and into other things. Things that might separate us from Him. Things that prevent us from being able to enter into his heavenly courts. 
Luther once said, we are nothing more than beggars before God. We've not earned the right to walk into those heavenly courts by our own deeds and our own accomplishments. It would take a great miracle from God. And God has given us a great miracle. We are invited to look at the Lord God and to look at the abundant blessings He provides. You know what does He provide? He provides us those first article gifts, first article of the Apostles' Creed, that is, where our Heavenly Father gives us life and health. He gives us ability and skill. He gives us so many things, our daily bread. He gives us food, clothing, and shelter. Transportation. Many different ways that we can communicate in our world today. Medicines and technology. So many blessings. He gives us our interests and the passions that we have. The things that excite us. Gifts from our Heavenly Father. He also gives us those second article gifts. The second article of the Apostles' Creed. He blesses us in the name of Jesus. Just as this man was healed in the name of Jesus. Our Lord gives to us an abundant of reasons to give thanks to Him. Our Lord Jesus walked into our lives. In fact, He walked through the streets of Jerusalem and He, he walked to Calvary carrying our sin and our guilt upon His shoulders. He alone would have the strength to do so. Later, He would walk out of the tomb very much alive. So through faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, we receive forgiveness. We receive grace. And we receive that promise that we will be able to walk into the heavenly courts of God and spend eternity with Him. Yes, indeed, look at the blessings the Lord gives. He gives us those third article gifts. He gives us His Holy Spirit. His Holy Spirit that gives us faith in Jesus Christ. His Holy Spirit that enables us to walk in paths of righteousness and help those who are sick and crippled and needy and struggle. God blesses us with many gifts and many reasons to give thanks. And so again, we consider how do you give thanks to the Lord God? Oh, we need not wait just for a special service or this one time of the year. We can give thanks spontaneously at any given moment. It's what the crippled beggar did. He didn't wait for a special service of thanksgiving. He just jumped and leaped and praised God. Oh, we can thank God too with such spontaneity. Even if it's just a, a one sentence prayer of thanks spoken in our mind or in our heart. Thank you, Lord, for letting me see that bird. The furnace kicks in. Thank you, Lord, for heat. Thank you for water. Or we get dressed. Thank you, Lord, for clothing that keeps us warm and protects us. Jackets in winter. Thank you, Lord, for the beauty of your creation. Thank you for this food. Thank you for the forgiveness of sins. Thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. Thank you for helping me with this task and for bringing me here safely. We can thank God spontaneously for whatever blessing he provides for us along the way. Thank you, Lord, for this person or that person. Indeed, how do you give thanks? Our thanksgiving may not always be private. Sometimes we express it publicly as we do in a worship service. Sometimes others can see our thanksgiving <coughs> and the life we live. Maybe the smile on our face, maybe the attitude we have or the love we show. Maybe the words we express as we credit God for the blessings we have. How do you give thanks? Maybe 
meetings and your prayers and your worship, just as the man walked into the temple, the house of the Lord. So we gather together and we give thanks to God in his holy house. And it's good that we do so, not just this evening, but every time we gather. We give thanks to the Lord as we praise him for every good gift that comes from above. Sometimes in this world and in our culture, we send thank you notes or emails or texts. Maybe you want to make a list of things you could thank God for. There are many ways we can give thanks. How do you give thanks to the Lord God? Oh, we're amongst friends here tonight. What have I not mentioned here tonight? What are some ways that, that you give thanks to God that maybe I didn't mention here this evening? Somebody feel free to share one if you have something that comes to mind. Well, as you think about it, maybe something will come to mind. Yes? Okay, we're thankful for memories. And how do you thank God for that? There's many different options, aren't there? Many different ways. But one thing is certain, is we have great reasons to give thanks. Because we have an ailment that's worse than this man in our text today. We have the ailment of sin. Sin that separates us from God. By our sinful nature, we walk away from the Lord. We walk into ingratitude. We separate ourselves. But God has had mercy upon us. In the name of Jesus, he brings to us forgiveness. He brings to us life and salvation. He enables us to walk into the heavenly courts. He blesses us with those first article gifts as well, the things that we need in this life and in this world. He gives us his spirit as he sustains and strengthens our faith and enables us to walk in paths of righteousness. How do you give thanks? Maybe it is by leaping, praising God. Maybe it's by just walking along through life and going about your tasks with it. Gratitude in your heart and in your life. Maybe it's in some other way. But indeed it is my prayer that you would indeed feel the relief and the gratitude of all of God's blessings in your life. And give thanks to him. Because this is the day the Lord has made. Amen. And now may the peace of God pass us all understanding. Keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, our risen Lord and Savior. Amen. We confess together our Christian faith as we use the words of Luther's explanation of the first article of the Apostles' Creed as you find it in your bulletin. Please rise. I believe that God has made that he has given me my body and soul, eyes, ears, and all my members, my reason and all my senses, and still preserves them. Also, clothing and shoes, meat and drink, houses and home, wife and children, fields, cattle, and all my goods. That he richly daily provides me with all I need to support this body and life. That he defends me against all danger and guards and protects me from all evil. And all this purely of the Father and upon my goodness and mercy. Without any fear of word in his sense, for all of which it is my duty to thank and praise, to serve and obey him, this is the most certain and true. Indeed, we give thanks to the Lord God with our lives, with our words, with our worship and also with our offerings. The eyes of all look to you, O Lord. 
You open your hand and satisfy the desires of every living thing. We give thanks to you for all the blessings that you grant to us in our lives and in this world. And we ask that you receive this time of worship and our lives and our service and these offerings as a thanksgiving to you. Amen. <laughs> Almighty Lord, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we give thanks to you for the many blessings you abundantly provide for us. The things that we need in this life and in our world, our daily bread, and so much more. We thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ, who brings to us forgiveness, life, and salvation. Your Spirit that gives us faith, and moves us to walk in the way of righteousness and to help those who are needy and poor. We thank you, Lord God, for every good gift. One day we will be able to walk into your heavenly courts, into that heavenly temple, and rejoice and praise you for eternity. We give thanks, O Lord, for one another, and for this time that we have together this evening. And Lord God, it is in your name that we come to you and ask for your help upon your servants. Those who face struggles and trials and difficulties, hurts and injuries, sickness and disease. Lord, as you heal the triple beggar, we look to you for your healing hand of grace and mercy. We pray especially for those that we now name in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear us now, O Lord, as we pray and as you have taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now may he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food richly supply and increase your store of seed and enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. Be you may be rich in every way and generous on every occasion to the glory of the one true God, Father. Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. May you see the car closing in.
Happy Sunday as we approach the uh, end of the church year, end of the church calendar. We're going to consider something a little different, and that is we're going to look at the persecuted church uh, throughout the world and how each one of us can be of service uh, to our fellow brothers and sisters in Christ uh, throughout this world. Any other announcements to be made this 